Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast Educational Network. Today, we're going to be talking all about Google Sites, and we're going to learn today how to publish a Google Site, get your site out there, and have it launched and ready to see the world. I'm so glad you guys are here today. Don't forget to check out our subscribe button and click on that bell below. We would love to have you guys as part of the TeacherCast Educational family here. So let's dive in, and today, we're going to learn all about publishing on the new Google Sites. So here we are in the new Google Sites, and today we're going to be talking about two things that are so important to the launching of our website. The first thing we're going to be discussing is the publishing settings and how to choose your own domain to get it seen by your audience. And the second thing we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about how to collaborate with others, and we're gonna discuss some of the important things about it and go over some of the issues that some people have in creating their websites that wind up maybe hurting them in the long run. So first of all, let's take a look up here on the top right. You can see we have our publish settings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the blue button here and that brings up our publish to web menu. You can see we've got a few different sections to this. On the top it says web address, followed by custom URL. We're gonna be able to manage who can view and edit our website. And then at the end, we have our search settings where we can request different search engines to do different things. Let's talk about all of them and why they're important. First thing over here is our web address. You're going to notice that right here it says HTTPS sites.google.com forward slash view. Now, there's two different ways that Google sets up your domain. The first is this forward slash view. Now, you might be seeing something slightly different. You might see sites.google.com forward slash and then a domain name, which means you're currently looking at Google Sites either on your educational domain or on your work domain. But because we're looking at this on our regular Gmail account, it says sites.google.com slash view. So the nice thing here is that it's all set up for you. Now, every website that Google offers can only have one unique identification. So in other words, if somebody else happens to have your name, for instance, if I did sites.google.com forward slash let's see. So it says right here, forward slash A, B, C, D. It says, this is a great address, but it's already taken. So we want to come up with something that is completely unique and see what happens. So here we go. And so now we can see here that TeacherCast demo website is uh, available. So we're going to use that right here. And now it says our website, once we hit publish, is going to be sites.google.com forward slash view slash TeacherCast hyphen demo hyphen website. So now we've got our URL. When we hit publish, we're going to be able to see it at that site. And I'll show you that in just a couple seconds. But that's a long thing to have to give to somebody and have to have somebody else remember. We do have a couple options here. We can create a custom URL, and that basically is a way to make it easier for people to visit your website using a custom domain, one that you've already purchased from a third-party domain host or you could even purchase it from Google for that matter. Now, we're gonna be linking at the bottom here to a great um, series of posts on how to do that. And I don't wanna go into that, that right now, but that's gonna be a, a link at the bottom. If you check out at the bottom of the video, we're gonna have all the information to do that. So I wanna skip right here past the anybody can view, and we're gonna skip down here to the bottom where it says search settings. Now, this is something that gives a lot of people a um, little bit of trepidation and a little bit of fear here. It says request public search engines to not display my website. Now, what does that mean? A lot of people always say, if I publish the site, can others find it? And technically the answer to that is yes. But if you're looking at the way search engines work, if you're looking at the way SEO works, if you're looking at the way that Google crawls things, it takes a lot of time. It takes a few months, if not even more than a few months for these things to get in. So if you hit the publish button, try not to ask the question, can I go do a Google search for my website? It doesn't work that fast. But let's say that I'm doing something for work or for school and I wanna click on this check mark here. This is basically asking Google to not index my site. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to do a few things. Let's click here on publish and it's going to hit the publish. Now, important to notice here, this site up here, it says sites.google.com slash all these letters on slash and all these other letters. This is your editing side. Notice here it ends in edit. We don't want to be giving that out. What we want to do is we want to click right here on this little uh, chain and we want to link this. Notice here it says copy this published link. And if I open up a new tab, this is my published page, sites.google.com forward slash view forward slash teacher cast hyphen demo hyphen website. And you really don't need to do the hyphen home. That's just a, a, a delineation for what this page happens to be. So again, please don't give out this when you're in the editing site. No one's going to be able to see your website. You want to give out the shorter version. All right. So let's take a look here. Now that I've published it, I've got a few different options here. I can go into publish settings and that gives me a similar option to what we just had. If I click back in here, I can say view published site, which again takes me out to the website that is our published version. Or I can come over here and I can unpublish the website, which of course then takes that URL away. Somebody else can then take it and use it. We're not going to do that right now. Okay, so we have these three different things. If I want to, I can change the domain over here and I could add hyphen one if I want. And if it's available, like it is great. I now have changed my website domain as soon as I hit the save button. And again, if you notice what it says here, updating any links will break the URLs. In other words, if you've already given this link out to somebody and you change the publishing settings domain, now they're not able to see your website. So use this uh, to your advantage, but also use this, uh, you know, knowing what you're going to be doing and what the consequences are. So now that we have that, that's the first step. That's how to publish and understanding how all of that stuff works. Now we're going to look at the second thing we're going to do in our video today, which is understanding how properties work and understanding how to work with collaborators and other team members in our Google Sites project. And to do that, we're going to click over here and hit share with others. And when I do that, that brings up the share with others tab. Now, there's a three things that we can notice here. It says who has access. So number one, it gives us the drafts. This is everything that we're doing on the edit side. The next thing over here, we have published. This is everything about the published side. And then down here, just like traditional Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides, this is going to show us all of the different people that have access to our Google site. Okay, so let's take a look at what we're doing. I'm going to click over here on drafts. This is important, important stuff that I see a lot of people not really understand when they're first working on this, and it leads to some nasty things in the end. So now we have our draft settings. In other words, who can see and access the edited version? And I got to tell you, the answer for this should be just you. If you're making a website for others, this should be checked off, meaning nobody else can edit this. However, we do see a lot that sometimes people find this setting and click on because they say, oh, I want my website to be public on the web. And they don't read the bottom here that says anybody on the internet can find and access and really edit your website. So we really just want to keep this down here unless we have a collaborator. Now, maybe you're doing something with a class or with a team that you work on. You might change these to which then you can share the editing link up on top. And then anybody who happens to have access to the website can then edit it because maybe you're working on a project or on a, on a book report or something like that. So what we're going to do is I always recommend keeping this set to off. The next thing is our publish settings and the publish settings we're going to look at here. And we really only have two options. Anybody can find and view or specific people can view when published. And so this is really asking two things. Do I want this to be accessible by anybody on the world in the world? Or do I want to turn this into a membership site? So for instance, we might use this here to help people learn um, how to do a certain task. And maybe I'm going to create a membership site just for my teachers or just for my team or even a website just for my family where I'm going to be able to post um, you know, vacation photos or something. And I can say only the people in my family can check out this version of my website. So these are two different settings. I usually recommend everybody just keep it as default unless, of course, you want to have it be specific people. 
Now, the next thing down here is we want to be able to invite others. And we're going to do that by clicking on a name. And we're going to put a name in here. And it says right here, this person can edit or this person can view. And again, these are important. If I want this person here to edit the website when they're signed in, then we're going to hit edit. If not, we're going to say that this person here can only choose the published version. Again, this is another way to help out and say, um, this person is a part of my team. I want him to view the site, but not edit the site. And down here, we can even say prevent editors from publishing, changing access, and adding new people. So there's a few different settings here that are interesting that we want to make sure about. I usually suggest everybody keep the default settings. However, I will make note that if you're doing this for a school or for a organization, the default might be published only in your domain, which means you might publish it not realizing that the outside world is not able to do it. So always check these settings to make sure that it's set up exactly the way that you want. And so there we go. We've talked a little bit about our publishing settings, and we've talked a little bit about our sharing settings with other collaborators. Now, if you are looking to get into Google Sites or if you're looking to do another type of website project, we have a great program for you over here on TeacherCast. We would love to work with you guys to create an amazing looking website for your organization, your team, your club, or heck, even that family vacation. You can go over to educationalwebdesign.com and you can work with me. You can also check out all the great resources that we have on educational web design as far as planning, choosing the best platform, picking the right, uh, the right equipment, and so much more. We are here to help you guys out over at educationalwebdesign.com. And of course, that wraps up this video from the TeacherCast Educational Network. I hope you had a good time. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Don't forget to subscribe to this video. Click on that bell. Let us know that you guys are here. We will let you know every time we release a video, and we would love to have you guys as a part of the TeacherCast Educational Network. So on behalf of myself and everybody here on TeacherCast, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.